Welcome to the sub-tutorial series. In this tutorial, you will get to know the instruments currently used in the socioeconomic panel study. Let's take a random adult survey respondent from one of our sub-households. This is Anna. She has been part of the survey for several years. Currently, she lives in a single household. Each year, when she is visited by the SEP interviewer, she completes two questionnaires, the personal questionnaire and the household questionnaire. These are the core instruments used in our study. The household questionnaire contains basic information about the household as such, including the number of household members, the type, size and condition of the dwelling, utilities and expenses, and other household-related financial issues. Information from the household questionnaire goes into the HL dataset. The personal questionnaire covers all aspects of respondents' lives, ranging from general life satisfaction to employment, leisure time activities and political participation. You will find this information in the PL dataset. Anna has been dating someone for a while and eventually this person moves in with her. As the SEP is a household panel, the new household member is asked to participate in the survey. Individuals who are interviewed for the first time receive the Supplementary Biography Questionnaire. This instrument aims to collect basic information about the person's life up to the present day, including information about their parents. Information from this questionnaire forms the basis of the BioParen and BioL datasets, as well as many other biographical and spell datasets. Anna and her partner decide to have a child, and Anna becomes pregnant. At the first interview after the child's birth, Anna receives the first in a series of specialized mother and child questionnaires. This first questionnaire asks about the last few months of the pregnancy, the birth and health of the child, whether the child is being breastfed and how the mother feels about her new role. The second mother and child questionnaire is administered to Anna when the child is aged 2-3 to three years. It contains questions about the child's development and behavior, health and childcare arrangements. When the child is between 5 and 6, Anna completes the third mother and child questionnaire, providing basic information about her child's development and behavior and about childcare arrangements and leisure time activities with the child. The fourth questionnaire is given to both parents when the child is between 7 and 8 years of age. It includes questions about the parents' educational aspirations for the child, the child's performance in school, childcare arrangements and parents' perceptions of their role parenting goals and parenting styles. The last childhood questionnaire is completed by the mother when the child is between 9 and 10 years of age. It covers the child's educational participation and outcomes as well as questions about the child's temperament and leisure time activities. All of the information from these childhood questionnaires is contained in the BioHL dataset. From the age 11 on, children can provide interviews themselves. The preteen questionnaire, which covers young people between the ages of 11 and 12, asks about education, friends and social networks, and the young person's personality. Between the ages of 13 and 14, young people are asked to complete the early youth questionnaire. This questionnaire covers similar topics as the previous questionnaire, but also includes questions about what the child is allowed to do alone and about political interests. The information from these interviews is contained in the BioPupil dataset. All of these datasets are available for children born in 2002 or later. Note that some basic information about children living in the household, including educational participation and leisure time activities, comes from the household questionnaire. This information is also contained in the KidLong dataset. The year young people turn 17, they are asked to complete the youth questionnaire. This instrument was introduced in 2001. It covers schooling decisions and outcomes, vocational training and side jobs, personality, social networks, leisure time activities and much more. Information from the Youth Questionnaire is contained in the JugendL dataset. After the age of 17, young people receive the same individual questionnaire as all other adults living in the household. Imagine that one year, for whatever reasons, Anna decides not to take part in the survey. Upon her return to the survey, she receives the catch-up individual questionnaire, which aims to collect some very basic information about the year she skipped. After that, Anna and her family participate in the survey for several years, until she decides to move abroad. 
For a few years, from 2008 to 2010, and again in 2013 and 2014, we interviewed sub-respondents who had moved abroad. Information from these interviews can be found in the abroad file. After 2014, we discontinued this questionnaire as it was rather costly to follow individuals into other countries. Now imagine that Anna's child has grown up, moved out and founded her own household. If Anna's child is continuing to participate in the SEP, this household becomes a SEP household in its own right. Anna's partner, who still participates in the survey, asks a close friend to move in. This person also becomes a SEP member. When Anna's partner dies of old age, this new household member is asked to provide some information about the last period of the deceased person's life. This information is collected in the deceased person questionnaire and it is stored in the VPL dataset. This is how we try to cover all phases of a respondent's life using instruments tailored to each phase of their lives and to different panel biographies. For more detailed information on each of these survey instruments, I would like to refer you to the questionnaire section in the SEP companion. Also, all the questionnaires given to respondents in each particular year can be downloaded from our website. You can find PDF versions of the questionnaires by going on our website and clicking on Research Data Center, SEP Core, Data and Documentation and finally Questionnaires and Fieldwork Documents. We strongly recommend that you take a look at the questionnaire that is the source of the variables and data that you are using in your research. The questionnaires increasingly contain the variable names of the variables which are connected to a particular question. If you want to know how to find the question and questionnaire that correspond to the variable you are working with, I recommend the video on our data documentation tool paneldata.org or the Stata Adufel SEP Help. Thanks for listening.